Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Amphibian Press podcast. Today, we're talking to Phoebe Alexander. Hi, Phoebe. Hey. Oh. <laughs> and welcome to the show. So you also write under the name K.L. Montgomery, but today we're going to stick to Phoebe. Um, and you have a new release coming up. That's right. Do you want to tell us about it? Sure. It is the third book in my series called the Eastern Shore Swinger Series. And it is an FF romance, which means it's a romance between two women. And um, I even have it with me so I can show it to you. Oh, perfect. Hopefully you can see it. Yes, I can so, see it. Yeah, this releases on Wednesday. And I'm super excited about it because it's my first FF book. And it also has all the characters from the first two books, which are Fisher of Men and The Catch as well. Nice. So you say that this is an FF romance. Is uh, Can you tell us a little bit about your characters? Sure. Um, one of the women is named Jessica Martinez, and she is an Ocean City police officer. The whole series takes place in Ocean City, Maryland at the beach, and it all centers around a swing club. So Jessie is a cop, and she belongs to the swing club, and there's been a member attending the swing club that the owners are a little concerned about because there's a lot of rumors going on around about her, and they kind of want Jessie to keep an eye on her and try to kind of figure out what's going on on and um so the other woman the mysterious one is named serena horn and um jesse's just completely infatuated with her pretty much from the first time she sees her and so the story is them getting closer together and um jesse figuring out serena's secrets and she has a lot of them so when we were talking before, you mentioned that you decided not to call your character a lesbian for a reason. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, um, uh, I wanted to have this book because I'm not a lesbian. I'm straight. So I wanted and it was very important to me to have the book read by somebody who could kind of um, tell me if I was on the right track with that situation. And so I had a lesbian beta reader and she really just she didn't think that Jessie seemed like a lesbian to her. And I think a lot of it was just that she didn't think a lesbian would join a swing club and participate in threesomes with couples. Um, I kind of disagreed with that because I had a lesbian friend that we used to take to the swing club with <laughs> us and she used to come to our parties and she did enjoy playing with couples. She only interacted with the women, mm -hmm. but that was kind of her thing. She really enjoyed doing that. Um, so, I mean, I do have evidence that such a person does exist, <laughs> but, um, she just felt, I don't know, my, my beta reader just thought that there were certain things that Jesse thought and said that just didn't seem in line with her with um, the way lesbians think, I guess. I don't know. Like I said, this is why <laughs> I'll read it because I can't speak for that personally, but I just decided to just take the label out completely and just leave it up to the reader and let the reader decide what Jesse's orientation is. She, um, she only wants to interact with women in the book and, um, Anyway, so now the other character, Serena, is definitely bisexual. Mm -hmm. She interacts with both men and women, and she's had romantic relationships with both men and women in the book. So, I mean, that I clearly identify her, um, but I leave things a little bit more open-ended with Jesse. And like I said, just let the reader um, decide that for themselves. Now, all my other beta readers thought that Jesse was a lesbian, but they're not lesbians. So I just didn't want... Um, I didn't want anyone to think I was misportraying her or mis accurately um, representing her. So that's why I just sort of decided, well, we just won't use a label for her then. I kind I, of, I labels yeah. only take you so far, right? Right. And I kind of like that too, because um, as someone who's dabbled, uh, it's hard sometimes to pinpoint, you know, a label for yourself. So it's kind of nice to just have the character do what she's going to do and not have to worry about that. Right, right. And I, and I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of labeling, it's, you know, you're, you self label, you decide for yourself what your orientation is. And, you know, other people need to respect that. And um, I just, 
like I said, she just pretty much doesn't call herself that in the book, but readers are going to probably draw their own conclusions. And, and like I said, I had a friend of mine that used to participate with us in swinging activities and she was a lesbian and she really enjoyed bi women. Um, and so I, I know that it's not completely out of the realm of possibility, but I don't want to rub anybody the wrong way either. Right. And I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to alienate readers either. So, you know, I figured this way, I'm, I feel better about it. So That's, that's, I, I like it. I'm curious to read it now and just see what I think. <laughs> I'll let you know. Um, so this is the third book of the Eastern Shore Swingers. Uh, in this series, you are continuing? I am. I already have the fourth book sort of percolating in my brain right now. And it's, um, all of the books sort of have their own sexual flavor. The first one is an older man and a younger woman who's really struggling with her faith and her sexuality and where those two intersect. And um, she's really forced to, I guess, reconcile those two things, um, which is something I had to go through myself when I was younger. So it's it's based on a lot of like personal wrestling that I did myself. Um, and it's called Fisher of Men. That's the first book. Um, the second book is The Catch. And that one is um, an interracial relationship. And um, it's sort of more suspenseful, I guess, in the first book. And the main character in it, the female, is plus size. She's a size 22. So she's a pretty big woman, and she's very confident about her size. And I love that about her. I think she's totally amazing. But she's running from her past, and the, um, the hero in it, Calvin, is really the only one who can help keep her safe. And of course, they fall in love because, you know, it's a romance. That's right. pretty much what happens. So then we have this book, the third book, which is Siren Call, which is also very, very suspenseful. Um, but the fourth book is going to be about um, one of the characters from the first book. And she, you know, appears throughout the series. But she's um, in present time. She's an older lady. She's in her 60s. And she helps to run the swing club. And she's been a local realtor in Ocean City for decades. And she knows everybody. But um, she is going to be flashing back about her younger years when she lived in a poly triad with two bisexual men. So it's going to be an MMF book and I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be a really fun dynamic to, um, to write and it's tentatively titled Sailor's Knot. <laughs> they all have nautical beach theme, so it kind of fits right in with the series, um, so yeah, that's hopefully going to be releasing in the fall, but you know, I have to write it first. Yeah. Just small detail, <laughs> you know? um, that's exciting. What time period does it take place in? Well, when she's flashing back, that um, those flashbacks are going to be like in the 1980s. Oh, good time. So when she's like in her 30s, yeah. But I mean, it'll be, part of the book will be present day. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to give too much away. So right. that's all I'm going to say about that. And then there's also some information. If you read book three, you'll kind of, I'm sort of setting up the fourth book because I'm talking about what's going on in Casey. Her name is Casey. Um, I'm talking about what's going on in her life and she has a battle ahead of her and you'll find out about that in book three. And then book four will sort of tell you how that battle turns out. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> nice. That's exciting. Um, so you have a lot of stuff with body positivity, and I wanted to touch on that for sure. Sure. It's really important to me as a plus size woman to um, make my characters diverse in size. So I have everything from Leah and Fisher of Men, who's like a size 10, 12, to Paisley and the Catch, who's a size 22. Um, Jessica in Siren Call is a size 16. Casey is a bigger woman. So I, I just want readers to be able to see themselves in my heroines. And a lot of my readers are plus size women like me. And I want them to have um, heroines that they can look up to and that they can identify with. So it's really important to me to have that sort of flavor in my books. I love that. So, um, what other series do you have out already? Um, I have another series called The Mountains Trilogy, which is soon to be more than three books. Sort <laughs> of. 
But um, the three main books, they all connect to each other. They have to be read in order because it's one story that carries through the whole thing. Um, the first book is called Mountains Wanted. It's actually perma-free, so you can go on any retailer and pick it up for free and start the journey, um, the story of Sarah and James. And um, Sarah, again, she's another plus size heroine. Uh, she's a sociology professor at the University of Maryland, and she happens um, to be looking for a friend with benefits. When our story first opened, she's a single mom, she's divorced, she doesn't think she wants to have a relationship, she just, you know, she wants a friend to hang out with and have fun with. Mm -hmm. So she meets what she thinks is an ideal candidate at um, a panel she's uh, participating in, and it's a, it's a panel about the don't ask, don't tell military policy, which just happens to have still been a thing when this book was written right. or when the book takes place, I guess. And um, there's a young ROTC instructor who brings his students to the panel and she talks to him afterwards. And there's a spark between them, of course, and they go out and they have coffee and she thinks, wow, this is gonna be the perfect friend with benefits until she falls in love with him. And of course, you know, he's younger, he's seven years younger, he's at a totally different place in his life, he's never been married, he doesn't have any kids, he thinks he wants like a very traditional relationship, he's Catholic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so they have some differing opinions about what they want for the future, and the series sort of takes off from there. But um, I'm mean, doing a spinoff of that series, and that book is about a character in book two named Garrett Stone, and it's called The Navigator, and it's coming out hopefully this summer. So it'll be happening between Siren Call and Sailor's Knot. So I have that series, and then I also have two standalone books as well. So you have plenty for readers. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I've been doing this for five years, so. Uh. I can't wait to be there. <laughs> I've only been doing it for two. So <laughs> it goes fast. Let me just put it like that. It goes really fast. Um, so how did you get into writing? Um, I have been writing since I was really little, like three or four years old. Um, my mother was a teacher, so she taught me how to read when I was very young. And it wasn't long after I was reading that I was writing stories and songs and poems. And I wrote my first book as I called it in third grade it was called maybe someday Katie about a, a little girl who was totally overworked by her parents <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have been because I felt extremely overworked as the oldest child I was the only one with chores and mm. um, I felt very put upon apparently but um my mother always really encouraged me to keep writing and I'm probably the only third grader who knew how to punctuate dialogue correctly, you know, with quote marks and everything. She would sit down and edit my books. And uh, I've just been writing since then. I wrote 16 books while I was still in elementary school and high school, and then put all those aside and didn't write another book until 2012 when I wrote Mountains Wanted. But in between, I was blogging and writing poetry. And I just don't think I could stop writing. I, you'd have to probably cut off my hands or something. <laughs> Writing, then I would probably learn how to do text to speech or something. <laughs> yeah, um, that's great. I love hearing those stories how people got into it. So, uh, what made you decide to self publish? Well, I wrote a blog on Adult Friend Finder for a very long time like six or seven years, and I had thousands of followers. And I had thought about writing and um. My partner at the time, who's now my husband, was the one, um, after I read Fifty Shades of Grey, I was like, here, you need to read read this. And he read a couple pages of it. He thought it was horrible. And he was like, you know, you could, you could do better than this. Yeah. <laughs> so we just, that same night, we just started talking about different ideas um, that I could write about. And the Mountains trilogy is really loosely based on my story and his story. I'm the older woman, he's younger, I was divorced, I had kids, he had never been married. I mean, it's very, we're very similar to James and Sarah. So um, at the time, I didn't think he and I really had a future together. And so writing the book was a way for me to explore a future I didn't think that he and I would ever get. And I always tell this story when I was writing book two when I was finishing it. I went away that weekend to finish it because he was in Florida with the woman that was his Maggie. If you read the book 
and you, you know, James is sort of in a triangle between Sarah and Maggie. Well, my husband had a Maggie. And when I was finishing writing book two, which has the happy ending, he was in Florida and I thought he was making plans with her for her to move here with him. And he'd been house hunting and they were gonna, and they were gonna be together finally. But he was actually breaking up with her. Oh. As I was writing, I did not know, I was writing the ending of Mountains Climbed. He was making plans so that he could be with me. So I was literally writing our happy ending, which is really extraordinary when you think about it. He was with me every step of the way as I was writing the books. He would read a chapter, give me feedback. So he was really connected to the series as I wrote it. And um, James, as I mentioned, he's an ROT, ROTC officer and he's um, an officer in the army. My husband has a military background as well. So he was the one helping me with all of those military details because I wouldn't have been able to do that part on my own. So he was the one encouraging me. He was the one, I would re write a chapter really quickly so I would have an excuse to go see him. Oh. So um, the fact that I was able to really write a series that brought us together, I, don't, I honestly don't think that he and I would be together now if it weren't for the books. So it was sort of a combination of me having this blog and lots of readers who were like, yeah, I'll buy, I would buy your book and him saying you should do it. And I just really never even considered sending it to an agent. I kind of um, decided that I was going to try it on my own and see what happened first. And then I would, I thought about querying agents, you know, as I went along, if I wasn't seeing the results I wanted, but I just kind of always felt like, there wasn't anything that a publisher could do for me that I couldn't do for myself. Mm -hmm. And I still feel that way. Five years later, I've still never queried an agent and I probably never will at yeah. this point. That, I love that story. That's a great story. <laughs> like, um, so crap. I had another question. <laughs> <laughs> I got really into that story. Um, so you had the blog. Do you have any other um, F and F or M and M romance, or was this your first delve into that with Sirens Call? It's it's the only one where there's like a romance. I guess the whole mountain series. I would say it's um, it's Polly, as in Sarah, my main character, is polyamorous, and so she has multiple, and she's bisexual too. So she's had you know she has multiple relationships going on at any one time. Um, so I have that, which is more of a poly series and then Fisher or the Eastern Shore Swinger series is more of a swinging type series. So I, I hope to continue exploring the FF and the MM dynamic as I, as I go in future books. And also I should mention that Garrett, who's, um, the main character in The Navigator, which is a spinoff of Mountains Climb, he's bisexual. So there's certainly going to be some, um, there are scenes I guess they're not romantic scenes, but they're sex scenes that have, that'll have him and other men in them. And there are scenes like that in Mountains Wanted and all the Mountains books, really. Um, so I don't, the reason that I ask that is because I don't know if you know if you're on Twitter at all, but there was a, there was a bunch of tweets going around recently about FNF romance and how it's hard to, uh, for those writers to, to get their work out there. And I wondered, just because of the timing of yours, if it was, because my first thought was, well, I'll write an F and F romance for people who want to read it. That was like my first thought when I read it. Yeah, I don't, I really don't, this didn't have anything to do with any of the trends I've been wanting to, um, like I've had this character of Jesse in my head for a really long time. Um, and it might be because my husband's a cop like I said, she's a police officer. My husband's a cop. And, you know, I've always been fascinated with his female coworkers because I know what his job is like. And for them to do that job, like I have nothing but the utmost respect for them. And I've gotten to know them. And um, actually, none of them are lesbians. But um, I don't know, this character just kept coming to me. And this is this happened last year or the year before. So I've had this on my slate to write for a long time. And it does seem like the time is right right now for FF romance. So I'm hoping this is going to be coming out at a good time, but I really don't make my decisions about what to write based on what's popular. So, I mean, I was going to write it one way or the other, but I think it's important to have, you know, the whole spectrum of sexuality um, addressed in books and represented in books. And that's what I want to do with all of my books. So. 
And it was bound to happen at some point in time. Yeah. <laughs> and do your readers enjoy the full spectrum? Have you gotten positive? It's feedback? so funny. I My readers are mostly straight women, but the readers that have really connected to my work are very open-minded. And a lot of them that would never, ever, ever consider doing like swinging or being poly or anything like that, they love reading about it because it lets them explore a world that they're probably not ever going to experience on their own. So yeah, they, they've all been really excited and supportive about Siren Call and all really looking forward to reading it. And my um, ARC readers and beta readers loved it. They loved Jesse. They thought Jesse was awesome. So I think it's great that I have such a supportive, um, such supportive readers in my life that are going to read pretty much whatever I write and they'll read all my KL books too. So I just, I feel really blessed to have readers like that. And I, you know, I have a, a reader's group of over 200 and I think we're up to 265 members right now and they'll just pretty much read whatever I put out, which is fantastic. That's great. I read um, The Playground and I actually really enjoyed that. I wasn't sure because like you said, I, I'm not the kind who would do like a swinging thing. I might do it once, but <laughs> now that I've read the book, I might do it once, but I wasn't really, I didn't think that was my thing, but I was curious enough about it to read the book. And I really enjoyed the book. I loved Journey's Journey. Journey, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I loved her name too. Journey West was just, that was great. Um, I love stuff like that. Anything even remotely punny, I'm all about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so is there anything else that you want to talk about? Um, I think basically just, I love it when readers can come into one of my books with just completely open minds without any kind of judgment. Um, one of the things that is one of my pet peeves, something I really hate is the whole concept of slut shaming. Yes. I really like if you look at my um instagram or my facebook i post stuff about it all the time because it just i can't think of too many things that frustrate me more than the whole idea of shaming a woman for expressing herself sexually mm -hmm. so it's really important to me that my characters um embrace their sexuality and they all have really big sexual appetites which is great and they're we just don't do slut shaming in my books it's just not a thing um, you know, whether they're mothers, whether they're not, whether they're single, whether they're married, it doesn't matter. Women are still sexual creatures and they shouldn't feel bad or guilty about being that way because that's the way we were made. Um, so I really appreciate readers who can open up my books and read them and not slut shame my characters. And if I get a review that says, you know, my characters are bad mothers or they're selfish or spoiled, that just reeks of slut shaming to me. So I know that that idea is still out there. It's still pervasive and it is perpetuated as much by women as it is by men, I think. So, you know, I would just encourage um, if you're on the fence, download one of my free books, Fishermen, which is the first book, Fishermen, which is the first book in the Eastern Shore Swinger series. It's free right now too. So you can get Mountains Wanted or Fishermen totally free and if you can read it with an open mind, I know you're going to enjoy it um, because the characters are really interesting, strong women. Um, that's all, that's pretty much it. Like I just um, encourage people to keep an open mind and by their reading. It's funny how how people will read about like vampires or you know things that are like don't even exist and be able to keep an open mind about that. But as soon as you you um, have a real relatable character like Sarah or like um, like Leah and Fisher men, then it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I can't, I can't like this character because she's not like me. It's like, okay, well you liked that werewolf. And they <laughs> so it just, it's just funny to me, but I, on some, in some levels, I think that's great because it means that they are trying to see themselves in my characters and that they, you know, they did evoke strong feelings from the readers, even if they didn't connect with the characters, I was still able to do my job. So. I'm so glad that you brought that up because that was the other thing um, that you talk about a lot on social media and I wanted to mention because I think it is really important that we stop slut shaming because it's, well, first of all, it's just ridiculous, but um, just let, like, live and let live, you know? Sure. <laughs> so, sure. Um, 
Yeah, and that's one of the things that I loved about your books is uh, all the women are so comfortable in their sexuality and what they want, and and that's what I loved about um, the the playground was Journey kind of finding who she wanted to be or who right. she. Even if they aren't in the beginning, they will be by the end. Right. <laughs> like which... or Leah actually in Fisher at Men when she's really struggling with the whole Christianity thing, and she's finally able by the end to put it all in perspective and to realize, um, you know, what does the Bible really say? And yeah, there's scripture in Fisher of Men because she's really working hard to rationalize her sexuality with her faith. And it's all, it's all out there. And it's the same journey I had to go on myself. Yeah, I, I, I might have to pick that one up too. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's freak right now. So, so no risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, so where can readers find you? Um, you can find all my books on Amazon. Some of my books are on iTunes, Barnes and Noble, um, Kobo and Google play. You can also connect with me on Facebook. I have a, um, author page under Phoebe Alexander. I also have a reader's group called Phoebe's angels. I'm on Instagram. I will say my Instagram, I say it's not safe for work because I really do embrace the whole sex positive body positive part. I will post pictures of myself in lingerie. And if you don't want to see a big girl in her 40s in lingerie, you probably shouldn't follow me on Instagram. <laughs> I'm also on Twitter at Erotic Phoebe. And um, I have a website, phoebe-alexander.com. So I'm all over the place. <laughs> Perfect. Just the way you should be. Yep. Um, so we look forward to your new books and from hearing from you again. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.